Well, this is what it looks like. This is real. This is yesterday and today is the very first public unveiling in a public presentation of Project Looking Glass. A human being is about this tall. This is built in underground bases. It is colossal in size. And what happens is when you fire this thing up, these rings start going in all different directions. It shields off the barrel of water inside, which is just like your pineal gland. The water inside flips over into time space, which then captures argon gas, captures visual images, and this is what it looks like. It becomes huge, glowing, all the way out to these posts, which are used as stabilizers for the energy field. Now, it doesn't start out with an image of the Earth. That's just there as a placeholder, although you could see the whole Earth like that if you wanted to. That's not usually what happens. Well, contact, right? We have been given the technology right in front of our faces in the movies. They just don't tell you what it's for. In what? 13 Ghosts? Well, thank you. I'll have to check that one out. Doesn't sound like a movie I'd want to see, but if it's for that... Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> so, contact, just to recap from yesterday, uh, blueprints come in from the Vegans, from Vega. They figure out that it's only when you fold up these patterns into a cube, which forms what there in the center, the triangle with the eye in the middle as it folds up, cube geometry, that's when you can decode the plans to build this, these rings, which becomes this machine. And there's your little helicopter. So there's another shot of it. They got computer animations of how it's going to work with the different rings moving. This actually looks like the fisheye lens distortion effect that happens around the looking glass when you power it on. There's a gantry crane up at the top, and the little guy is dropped down and goes inside. That's like your barrel inside the, the uh, mechanism there. And this is where all the action happens. This is where the stargate opens, the wormhole, into the higher realms. In this frame, we're seeing how the whole thing collapsed and fell apart. So, of course, you want to take a ride. You know, the new, uh, <laughs> the new formation of, of the one after the old one breaks. And here we're seeing the new one. Once again, you get a very clear view, and there's your little eye with the rays coming off of it, just like the all-seeing eye on the dollar. Not surprising. Here she is. It's even larger than the real one, standing on this... Uh, on this ladder, looking down inside. This is the chamber and the chair inside, which we'll see is very important. And here's your geometry. Look at that. Did anybody notice that when you were watching the movie? Because it goes by pretty fast. That's that same geometry that's in the background radiation of the whole universe with the sphere in the center. They fire it up. Guess what happens? Big, bright luminosity, just like the real thing. The real thing that they're actually using and have been using since the 40s at least. And here's what it looked like from the control room. It gets brighter and brighter, and then she starts having the floor disappear. She gets dropped down inside, and then, of course, she goes through this wild uh, wormhole ride, and there's an ascension experience at the end of the dream, because it is like a big dream, because she's in the dream plane. Now, last Mimsy, again, you got the same principle. The children find this these little objects. She finds this uh, this toy... Uh, rabbit, and he finds this little uh, thing that helps him speak to the spiders. It all comes out of this, it, this cube that they find. Well, guess what's going on here? Same thing. It, it creates, a, at the end of the movie, it has created a wormhole into the higher realms, which allows them to send DNA into the future. Uh, now, this movie is like an infomercial for everything that my colleague, Dr. Dan Burrish, has been saying he dealt with in Majestic 12, dealing with extraterrestrials from our own human future, future human lineage extraterrestrials, as he called them. And apparently, in, in his system, they have gone to the future, they have uh, survived, but they had a small gene pool as a result of the cataclysmic activity in 2012, and I'll get into why I don't believe this is what's going on. And then they needed our DNA, and they're trying to come back in time to get our DNA to fix their genetic problem. So this whole movie is just a big infomercial for all the stuff that Burrish has been saying right down the letter. And there was a lot of development on the script. It is actually a great movie. I do recommend it. Now, here's the thing. This is actually precisely what was found, except for the sphere, but the shape, and then even the little filigree on the outside, the little one-centimeter raised filigree, this is what's called the cube. 
It was found in the Roswell crash. And this is what it looks like when the tides open. Just, do you ever see the movie Hellraiser? I don't know if you'd want to. But they have a little puzzle, a little box that they flip, and then it pops open, just like this. And what happens when it pops open? Where do you end up going? You go into this parallel reality that's like hell, right? So that's all based on real knowledge because some of the spiritual planes you can go to are pretty nasty places. So when it opens up, you get these brilliant, vibrant colors inside and this grid pattern. It's called the yellow disk because the little yellow disk forms right here when it starts. And then you get a full color image, unlike the other, uh, the, the other one where it's argon gas and it's all yellowy. It get, you get a, a perfect color image on the, on the real thing. And, of course, there's a treaty that they have with the ETs that per forbids them from giving you the writing that's on those panels. We can't do anything about that. Again, you're seeing the same redundant geometric metaphors here, the sphere with the geometry. So all of this stuff, all of this usage of the looking glass technology has created some very, very interesting things. They have used this, for example, to cheat on presidential elections. Think about it. If you actually did have a technology that could allow you to look into the future and you're running for office, what are you going to want to do? You're going to want to go look at the newspaper headlines and the television and figure out what swing states you lost. So then you're back in time and you can program your Diebold voting machines to tip the vote just enough that it's exactly 50-50, which is what happened in 2000 with George W. versus Gore. And it's what happened again in 2004 with George W. versus John Kerry. Okay? The problem is that as a result of the fear that they have that in 2012 that you're going to get an Earth axis shift, which is caused by an inappropriate amount of energy moving through the looking glass devices, they have, as of December 2006, completely deactivated and deconstructed all looking glass technologies on the Earth. The Iraq war had, to a large degree, the mission of capturing a looking glass technology that was dug up in Sumer, which was originally in the possession of Gaddafi in Libya, which is why they attacked Libya. Gaddafi got rid of it and gave it to Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein was using this technology, viewing the future, the U.S. government went in after him because they felt that the fate of the world was at stake because if they did not capture this technology and get it back and deconstruct it, that the earth would have a pole shift. So this is what they say, and it's a great story. It'll make a great movie, which I'm sure is being written. <laughs> Expand, we're going to get into the pole shift and why I don't think that that's what's going on at all. I do have a negative doom and gloom disaster view of our future. It's very important that you hear that, even though I know some of this stuff might be a little freaky looking. So the D of the CTP is what they call it in code parlance, because nobody's going to know what that means. But when you actually decipher these letters, it means the doctrine of the convergent timeline paradox. Uh, here's the problem. You look through time with this device, and when you hit 2012, everything goes perfectly white. As you get closer and closer to 2012, starting in around 1980, a very strange thing has been happening when they use the looking glass. There is an interlacing of images. So right now, imagine that if I had this slide on half the time, and then the other half of the time, there was an image of like a face. And if I interlace them slowly, then maybe every second it goes from here to the face to here to the face. Then as it speeds up, it gets faster and faster to the point that if it were complex images, you couldn't make out one from the other because they're flip-flopping so fast. Okay, That's called interlacing, and the frequency of the interlacing gets higher and higher as you go towards 2012. So any time that they try to look at, like, or they used to try to look because they're not using them anymore, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, bam. It's so interlaced that they have a whole server farm of computers just to deconstruct the two images and be able to see what they're looking at in the future. My website is divinecosmos.com. Uh, and we're going to talk about all this stuff there to some degree, but it's mostly going to be on his research with uh, biology, which we'll get into later. But um, anyway, we have multiple parallel futures that we can choose. 
And what he found was there was a treaty that they were trying to do with the extraterrestrials that was codenamed Tau-9. And in the Tau-9 treaty, they had a line item in the treaty that was intended to share his biology technology with the ETs. And that technology was able to reproduce the original seed of all life on Earth, which the which the ETs wanted to use to be able to heal their own DNA because they believe that they're human lineage. So what he found out was that these other beings apparently had contacted him and said, Do, you cannot tamper with the tree of life. You can look at it, you can admire it, but you can't mess with it. The tree of life is the actual source code of our DNA. So he, what was happening was, they were looking into the future, and he took the, the negative visual that he got from the alien, from, the, from the, uh, the ascended being that came to him and warned him about the tree of life. He held that image in his mind of what would happen to the earth in 2012 if this were allowed to happen. And the image inside the looking glass immediately shifted to the apocalyptic vision. So he was able to prove by doing this that you can determine the outcome of what this thing shows you by your conscious focus. So this is, 2012 literally does represent create your own reality time. It has everything to do with what do you expect is going to happen. This is where thoughts becoming reality really takes on a whole new meaning in a way that you've never heard of before. Okay? So that's what the chair does. The chair is the interface with your consciousness. So when you understand that your consciousness is interfacing through the chair, that helps you get to a point in yourself where you can see that the chair is a psychic amplifier. That's what it does. The chair's function is that it takes your natural, innate psychic function and makes it vastly more powerful. Oh, the Philadelphia experiment uh, was uh, the result of the testing of high energy arc welding on the creation of very large battleships by the US Navy in World War II uh, surrounding Norfolk Naval Air Force Base, which I used to be right near in Virginia Beach. What they found was that when you got this, uh, this high energy, this was the highest arc welding ever done, like a big bolt of lightning. And it pinched time space into space time. So you get this black hole in the room. And then, actually, they were having tools disappear. So the tools never came back, and they realized there's something here we can use, and they actually designed it into something that they put on the ship in the hopes that the ship would be able to be invisible, like the tools became invisible. What they didn't realize is that they were going to jump from one place to another, and it had a devastating effect on the crew. Anyway, uh, I don't want to spend all of our time just going through this old material, so we're going to get back to the chair. We're going to get back to the point that they could actually create a wormhole with the chair, with the psychics exercising their consciousness in the chair. They had help from, apparently, ETs from Sirius in designing the chair. And the chair allowed them to send people through time. There were multiple wavelengths that the chair cranked out on graph paper. Okay, Some of those wavelengths were corresponding to a natural 20-year harmonic in the Earth's vibration. And that 20-year harmonic, as it turns out, if people were moving through time, which is one of the things they found they could do, is send people through time, this wave would tell you exactly where you were in time, depending on where up and down it was. So what they found that was so bizarre was that at December 21st, 2012, they could calculate it down to the day, that's how precise this was, that for some reason all the graphs, all the waves would go into a complete flat line. They no longer moved up and down like before. They went flat for like seven or eight seconds. So then they're asking the guys that went through these stargates and were traveling into the future, what happened to you? Every single time that somebody tried to hit 2012, they said the same thing. There was this thing they called the bump. It actually hits you like a bump. You actually feel like you've slammed into something. And as soon as it slams into you, you have the most incredible religious experience you can imagine. Cosmic consciousness. Your consciousness just blasts into this wonderful place where you have awareness of no space, no time, 
all knowledge is available to you, ecstatic God consciousness. You could be the galaxy, you could be a subatomic particle, you can go everywhere, do everything, and there is no sense of it ever ending. 